we're glad to be sharing the ministry of Redemption Church with you. Now join us as we receive the Word of God. So I don't know if this is okay. I'm going to try it out. Happy New Year. Is it still okay to say Happy New Year? Is there, is there, what is the limitation? It's the second Sunday. Is it too long, Vicki? Is it too late? Is it? Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. I, it's still new to me, and I, I'm still having trouble with 2 0. Two zero. Still having trouble with that. We want to see you have the best year ever. So we're in the middle of our sermon series, second week of our sermon series. It's called 2020 Vision. Real quick review. Last week we told you we don't, you don't want this year to be like last year. Yeah, Correct. Right. It's not happy old year. It's happy new, new. new year. And you want things to be different. In order for things to be different, you have to be different. You have to think differently. You have to do things differently. You have to speak differently. If you want a different year, then you've got to be different. We need a mission and a vision. Can anybody remember what a mission is? Mission is the what. Good job, because if you didn't know that, I would just pull up last week's notes. We'd <laughs> preach it all again. Mission is the what. It's what you're trying to accomplish. Mission is the what and then vision is the how it's how you're going to accomplish how you're going to see all those things that you want to see done how are you going to see those accomplished you need a what and you need a how you need a mission and you need a vision Habakkuk 2 and 2 encouraged us to write down a vision from the Lord that is our scripture memory verse. That's half of our scripture memory verse. Let's look at it together. Let's read it out loud together. Then the Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. A little different version than what we're learning. Write down the revelation or the vision so that a herald, so that anyone who reads it can run with it. You need a mission and vision from the Lord. If you haven't spent time already this year asking God, what is it that you want me to do? And give me wisdom so I know how to do it. You need a mission and vision and not just any mission and vision. You need it from the Lord. And if you've got that, then what are you waiting for? You get running. You start running with that mission right. right now. And it says that you should write it down. If it's written down, it doesn't change, especially if it's written in tablets of stone, right? Right, right? You need something that represents, I've made a decision and I'm not going to change my mind on it. There's a lot of people that have a mission on January 1st, but around uh, January 5th, that mission is not the same. They've changed their mind on it. They woke up one morning and said, whoa, it is cold. I don't think I'll go work out. No, you need a mission that is written down, that you have decided what you're going to do. Is that what this verse is telling us to do? Absolutely. A vision so compelling that whoever reads it may, might want to run with it. I want to tell you that God wants to give you a vision so big that not only you are to be a part of it, but other people are going to see your calling and they're going to want to join up with you. Wouldn't you want a vision so awesome that your whole family gets on board, yeah. that your children get on board, that other people get on board? I'm telling you, you could have a vision. God could call you to do something today that just lights everyone else on fire. And they're like, I want to be a part of that Bible study. I want to be a part of that support group. I want to go and minister with you. Can I go and do those things? What is that? That is writing down a vision from the Lord so that whoever sees it can also run with it. We need a mission and a vision. I wonder, could you wonder with me for a moment, did Jesus have a mission and a vision? Did Jesus in Scripture have a mission and a vision? Is it written down somewhere in Scripture? Well, I want to tell you, just kill all the, all the drama. Jesus is a man of mission and vision. Do you believe that? Yeah. Think for a moment. What would a good mission statement or a vision statement 
be for Jesus in Scripture? Can you think of one? I'll just let you think for a second. Can you think of, is there any verse that goes, oh, that's a pretty good one. I think that is, that is kind of a mission statement for Jesus Christ. Anybody ever written a mission statement or a vision statement? Well, what is Jesus' mission, vision statement? Well, there are several to choose from. We're going to look at it. The question is, what did Jesus come to do? That's his mission, because mission is the what. John 6, 38 says this. Jesus says it. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. Jesus says this many times. He says that my plan, that my calling, that everything I'm called to do is the will of the Father. Say, will of the Father. Jesus came to do the will of the Father exclusively. Now listen, Jesus did uh, the will of other people. They wanted him to do something. Hey, they said, hey, please come and heal my daughter. Please come and feed us food. Please and come and, and, and spend time with us. And Jesus did those things. But let me tell you, exclusively, he did those things because it was the will of the Father father do you follow that jesus exclusively did the will of the father that would be a pretty good mission statement for us too wouldn't it to do the will of our father in heaven and what is the will of the father well greatly jesus gives his own commentary two verses later he answers this verse 40 for my father's will is that everyone who looks to the son and believes in him shall have eternal life and i will raise them up at the last day this is what jesus came to do he came to do the will of the father and the will of the father is that everyone who looks on the son receives eternal life and that he will raise them up at the last day this is a mission statement for jesus christ now he says it differently throughout the four gospels but i want to tell you Although he may use different words, it is the one and same mission. Here's another way to say it. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Jesus says, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. He came to seek and to save the lost. Now, I've known some Christians that kind of go by that differently. That they have come to demean, judge Throw stones at the lost. But that is not Jesus' mission statement. Let me tell you, it should not be the church's mission statement to go and judge people and to throw stones at people. No, it is to seek and to save the lost. That is Jesus' mission statement. Notice he doesn't come to be worshipped. Although Jesus is worthy of worship. He doesn't come... For someone to build him a great big cathedral. Right. Although he's worthy of that and so much more. He actually didn't come for us to seek him. No. He came to seek us. There's a thing that happens in churches all the time. Will you receive the Lord? The, the great thing about receiving the Lord is that he has already received you in advance. He already sought you out. He has already found you. And he has come to save you. Maybe you know John 3.16. Does that sound like a pretty good mission statement for the Lord Jesus Christ? Right? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. There's so many verses we could look at. But I want you to understand this, that Jesus Christ had a mission. He came to do the will of the Father and to save the lost. That's what he came to do. And you know what? He didn't add other things to that. All right. He just exclusively did those things. Can I just, you learn something real quick. Sometimes adding to is not so good. All right. Sometimes you've got a plan, but then you add stuff to it, and it actually takes away from your total vision in the end. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Jesus Christ didn't add that. He didn't add, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the will of the Father, I'm going to save people, and I'm going to set up my own denomination. No, no. 
He didn't do that. That's us. That's what we do. That's what we do. We set up our own denomination. He didn't say, I'm going to do the will of the Father, and I'm going to save people, and I'm also going to make fun of people that don't love me. That's not what he does. It's not what he does. His mission is exclusive. You need to have a little bit of exclusivity to your mission today. I'm going to do the will of the Father. And someone else comes up and says, hey, would you do these things that, that is not the will of the Father? You say, no, I'm not going to do that because I'm exclusively trying to do the will of the Father. If you will make that decision in your life, it will take care of a lot of your decision making in the future. Make that decision today. It will make the rest of your year not very complex. All right. Jesus came to do the will of the Father. And to save the lost. Jesus has a mission. Jesus knew what he came to do. It's really sad to see people that don't know what they are supposed to do. I don't know what God wants me to do. I don't know what I'm called to do in life. I don't know what I feel about this. You need to understand the what. Jesus Christ understood the what he understood it pretty much from day one when he was a little kid that was left in the temple mary his mom's like what are you doing jesus mother voice and w- your mother didn't say that no and what did jesus say I must be about my father's business. I am about my father's business. He knew what he was about. Do we understand our mission? Do we understand what we are to do? Now, Jesus had a mission, but he also had a vision. Do you believe that? Oh, yes. Jesus knew how he was going to accomplish. He knew the how. Here's some verses. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is a vision statement right here. This is a a how he is going to do the will of the Father and a how he is going to save people. Do you understand this? He preached what? Repentance. And what? That the kingdom has come near. Jesus preached repentance from what? From sin. Repentance is that turn away from sin and turn back towards God. Jesus Christ preached that from the beginning of his three and a half years of ministry. He was preaching repent. Jesus preached that God's kingdom is a reality and that reality is coming nearer and nearer to us. Do you see this picture that God's kingdom is coming near? Really quick, I was thinking about this this week. So let's just pretend, all right, pretend. I'm not making a prophecy here, but we're just pretending. Here's a bit of information. Jesus Christ is going to return in one minute. 60 seconds, start the clock, all right? What's going to happen in one minute? Now it's 55 seconds. Hey, by the way, can I interest you in some cocaine or some drugs? 45 seconds. Jesus, no, are you sure? Some methane, phetamines? Does anybody want some drugs? Anybody want, anybody uh, want some pornography? We're at 35 seconds till Jesus. Any, can I interest you in maybe having an affair? 25 seconds. Anybody want to do violence and yell at people and take the name of the Lord in vain? 15 seconds to go. You're running out of time to sin. Jesus is returning. Can I interest anybody in sinning? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Trumpet sounds, Jesus has returned. I couldn't convince any of you to sin one minute before Jesus returned. Do you know why that is? Because you realize when the trumpet sounds that his kingdom will come to this earth. And you want to be ready for it. Right? right? But what Jesus tells us here from almost 2,000 years ago, he preached, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near you are not waiting for the trumpet to sound for the kingdom of heaven to be right at your doorstep you're getting it all wrong you need to be able to repent of sin and turn away from it and not be tempted by it because the kingdom of heaven is here right now do you understand that jesus says the kingdom of heaven is 
within you. That the kingdom of heaven is not a place. It's not food and meat. It's not drink. But it is the spirit of God. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That is the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus said. Can I help you? Can I shake you for a moment? We have this understanding. Oh man, when that trumpet sounds, that's really serious. Wake up. It's serious right now. You're not waiting for a trumpet to sound. You got a mission to accomplish. You got a vision to see fulfilled and sin ain't gonna do it. Get real with it. Get to repenting and seeing the kingdom come near. Can I tell you something? That if you're having trouble with sin right now, it's because you aren't understanding the kingdom. And that you're choosing another kingdom rather than the kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Jesus preached about this. Math, uh, Mark chapter 10, verse 45, it says this from Jesus for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is a vision statement. Do you see this? That this is the how. This is how you do the will of the Father. And this is how you save people from their sin. You serve them. Redemption Church, can I tell you, this would be a good vision for us to serve this community, to serve people, that when people call us asking for help, we serve them. When people come to this altar and they're crying and they're fearful, that we serve them, that we serve this community. Get out of the mindset of who can we get to help serve us. No, it's not about that. It is about serving them. And can I tell you, when you serve other people, you will be serving God. And to give his life as a ransom. That is his vision, y'all. That's the how. That he gave his life as a ransom. Are you giving your life to someone else today? Are you giving your time? Are you giving your strength? Are you giving your energy? I'm telling you, that is your life. That is your life. Sometimes you think giving your life is just like the heart rate monitor stopping and then you're dead and you gave your life like that. I mean, that's possible. But also when you give your time, when you give your focus, when you give your listening ear, when you give someone your eyesight and let them know that they're a person, that is giving your life to someone. And there are people all over the place. You ever walk into a grocery store and, and you, the person behind the counter just looks like if you could read their mind, it would be something like, please shoot me. Just please end this all. Am, am I right? You ever see that? Walk up to that person and give your life. Yeah. You have life in you. Give it to them. I love, I love to see those people and I love to walk up and say, hey, how are you doing today? And then I don't know what they're going to say. Some of them fake it and they're like, well, I'm doing fine, blessed and highly favored, or die ah, my kids or something. I'm like, I'm right there with you. And actually looking at them, and before they know it, they're having a conversation with a, a real-life person. All day they've been treated like a machine that, that scans things, right? And you're giving people life. Redemption Church, we're called to give life, and we're called to serve. This is whose vision? It's the vision of Jesus. You won't find a vision like that anywhere else, y'all. You won't see, you won't see, the world doesn't have that vision. Washington, D.C. certainly does not have that vision. The United Nations don't have that vision. You can't find that vision anywhere, but you find it in Jesus Christ. It's the how that he does the will of the Father, and he saves people from their sins. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 through 19. I love this verse. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free. How about that? The next verse says, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. What, anybody know what he's quoting here? What is he quoting? He's quoting Isaiah chapter 61 this is actually a messianic prophecy he actually declares a messianic prophecy and then he declares today it's been fulfilled and they get so angry they get so angry read it they try to throw jesus off a cliff they like usher him out and they're gonna 
throw them off the cliff. And somehow, some way, he just walks right between them. And they're like, where did he go? Where did he, he was just right here. We were going to kill him, but he's gone. Where did he go? That's in your Bible. That's your Jesus. I love that. They were so angry. They wanted to kill him. And then they couldn't find him. I bet they felt real smart. Don't you think they were? Where'd he go? I, why didn't you keep your eye on him? They're like blaming each other. Before you know it, they're like Larry, Curly, and Moe, like hitting each other on the head. The three stooges. Knack, knack, knack. All right. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he is anointing me. I want to tell you, this is a vision statement from Jesus Christ. This is how Jesus is accomplishing. You want to know how he's accomplishing? The Spirit of the Lord is on him, and the Spirit of the Lord is anointing him. Do you know the purpose of anointing? Do you know the purpose of anointing? Anointing is always attached to purpose. Anointing is like the rubber stamp of God that says, I have chosen you to do that. Is that something you want in your life? Where God would just rubber stamp you and say, that right there. I want you to do that. Well, your Bible is filled with this. Your Bible is filled with the fact that you are called by God. That he has put his name upon you. He has put his seal upon you. He has put his spirit upon you. He has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So you should so forth the praises of him. This is what he's done. It's all throughout the Bible. And all throughout the Bible are rubber stamp things where God says, I want you to do that. You can go and do that. I want you to fulfill this. It's a promise of God. It's for you. You got to open your Bible though. You got to actually, I don't know, look into the word of God. Some of you are just moping that you got no calling in your life. You've got the calling you don't have the revelation. You haven't looked at it. All of heaven is waiting for you to get the revelation. All of heaven is waiting on you to do the will of the Father. Amen. How will he proclaim the good news to the poor? The Spirit of the Lord. The anointing of God. That's how. Redemption Church, how will we proclaim the good news to the poor? Oh, easy. Say it. It's the Spirit of the Lord. It's the anointing of God. How will he proclaim freedom for the prisoner and sight to the blind? Well, it's easy. It's the Spirit of the Lord and it's the anointing of God. Well, Redemption Church, how will we do something like that? Proclaim freedom to the prisoner and sight to the blind. What is it? It is the Spirit of the Lord and it is the anointing of God. How will he set the oppressed free and proclaim the year of the Lord's favor? Some Somebody help me. It is the spirit of the Lord. It is the anointing of God. How will we do that? Set the oppressed free. How will we proclaim the year of the Lord's favor? It is the spirit of the Lord. It is the anointing of God. Can I tell you, it would be really stupid to be afraid of God's spirit. But there are churches everywhere that are so afraid of God's spirit. If God's spirit showed up like it did in Acts chapter 2, they'd shut the place down. I'm not kidding. That's true. Some of y'all know I'm right on. There are play people that are wonderful Christians, but they would be afraid if God gave them a, a gift of the Spirit like prophecy all of a sudden. Or God wanted them to go lay hands on somebody and pray for them. Let me tell you, if you're afraid of the Spirit, you're going to miss out on the entire vision. You're missing out on the how. Because can I tell you, there's no other how than the Spirit of God and the anointing of God. There's not another how. You find me another how. There's not another one. Somebody needs healing. How, how do you do that? The Spirit of the Lord. There's no other way. And guess what? God has given us His Spirit. God has placed His anointing on us. Are we aware of that? Do we see that? Are we excited about that? My gosh. I'm telling you, there's a problem, though, because you can't live in the flesh and live in the spirit at the same time. And so if you're living in the flesh and doing the things of the flesh and doing sin, that's actually keeping you from all the how of God's kingdom. It's keeping you from the vision of all God's kingdom. Can somebody say amen to that? That's the truth. So get this. Some people, 
Some people are, oh man, sin is this really sad thing because, you know, I failed and everything and it's just such a bummer. I'm such a loser. That's not what it's out about at all. It's about keeping you from God's purpose for you. That's the real set. We are focused on the thing I did, and it's so shameful. Man, if anybody ever knew the shameful thing I ever did, that's not the shameful thing. The shameful thing is God has a calling for you right out there, but you're over here doing this? That's the real shame. That's the real crime that God would have you go and heal people and bring hope to people, but you're doing this back here in the shadows? No, that is crazy but that's what sin is i want you to rethink about sin sin is that thing that easily besets you the bible says lay aside every weight and sin that easily besets you that easily trips you up and look towards god and look towards the calling of god that's god's plan for you are you trying to accomplish your mission and vision without the holy spirit are you trying to do that if you're not praying, if you're not reading your Bible, if you're not letting His Spirit flow into you and just move out all the junk, then yeah, that's what we're trying to do. And we've tried to do that every year. Every resolution. We're like, in fact, I run into this all the time. Oh, I can't see. This is one of my least favorite things. Here it is. You know what? When I get myself straight, then I'm going to come to church. I'm going to give my life to God. What are you doing? That is 100% backwards in every way. If you could fix yourself, well, we'll just wait for you to fix yourself. Let me tell you, that is not going to happen. You need to know the how, and the how is the Spirit of God. The how is repent, for the kingdom of God has come near. That's the how. That's the how. If you're a sinner in this place, welcome. We're all here together. Excellent. That's why I'm here. Sinners need to be in the house of God and they need to come to this altar. I'll be here later. Come meet with me. We'll be here together because we are both needing the Spirit of God to transform and move in our lives. Amen. The Spirit is how Jesus accomplished. He did not do anything without the Spirit. There is nothing He did without the Spirit of God. Can I tell you that the church can't do anything in God's kingdom without the Spirit. Really can't. Really cannot. Really cannot. Jesus has vision. Do you agree? Yes. He's a man of mission and vision. How he was going to accomplish, he knew it. He knew it. Do we have vision? Do we know the how? Can I tell you, Jesus succeeded. Yes. You believe this? Oh, man. He succeeded. His mission and vision were accomplished. And not just kind of accomplished. You ever kind of accomplished something? Like, I was close. Yeah, it was good, right? Gosh. Kind of made it? No, Jesus 100% accomplished everything. And if he didn't, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here today. You wouldn't hear the name Jesus had he not accomplished it. You wouldn't have a Bible here. People wouldn't have given their life for this thing. But because he accomplished 100% of it, that's why we're here today. Jesus succeeded. I want you to know Jesus Christ succeeded. Whereas no one else has succeeded 100%. He did. So let me ask you this. Why else would you follow anyone else? Why else would you look to someone else's self-help book? On mission and vision. I mean, you can get good information out of those, but why not look to the one who accomplished it all? Amen. Every bit of it. You mean he kept 100% the will of the Father in heaven? Yeah, yeah that's, exactly, that's exactly what I mean. Amen. Wait, you mean that he accomplished 100% that he could save any sinner from their sin? Yeah, yeah that's exactly what I mean, it's the biggest of all things. It's the most important thing that's ever happened on planet Earth. Yeah. The mission and the vision of Jesus Christ. Who else has accomplished like Jesus? No. Nobody. Oh my goodness, Satan, 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 you are such a loser. Compare your accomplishments to the Lord's accomplishments. You have accomplished nothing. 
You are worthless. You have never created anything. And in the end, all, everything you got is just going to be swept into an abyss, dude. You are such a loser. Why should we even pay you a second mind? Jesus Christ has done it all. He's done it all. He's done it all. You're praying to a God who's won every victory. You're praying to a God who has accomplished it all. In heaven, there's this moment where they're, uh, they're in the throne room. And there's all these elders and they start crying. They're crying in heaven at this point. They're crying. They're saying, nobody's worthy. Nobody can open the book and break the last seal. And bring the, the divine will of God into motion. And they're, they're bawling and they're crying. But then in Revelation, a lamb appears. And their cries come to shouts of joy when they start declaring, He is worthy. He is worthy to take and open the book. To open the scroll. To open the seal. To bring in the complete will of God. He has accomplished it. Nobody else but Jesus. Nobody else but Jesus. I want to give you a key to Jesus' success. Now this is just one little key. Here it is. It's very simple. Jesus saw his mission and his vision everywhere. Say everywhere. 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 Jesus saw his mission and vision in every person. He saw it in people that other people would look past. Like fishermen. Everybody else is walking past the fishermen. They're keeping their distance because they don't smell. They smell like fishermen. They were not the bread and butter of society. But Jesus walks right up to them and he says these two words. What does he say? Follow me. He sees them. He doesn't look past them. He sees his mission in them. He sees their vision in those men. They had to be like, what? Me? Yes, you. He, he saw it in a sinful woman about to be stoned. The Pharisees had taken up stones and they called Jesus over to join into the stoning. Let me tell you, we do that sometimes. We wish that Jesus would get people. Have you ever prayed that prayer? Jesus, get them. Get them, Jesus. You're calling the wrong guy. You're calling the wrong God because that's what the Pharisees did. And he goes in that place and he chases the Pharisees out of there. And he looks down at this woman who everybody was about to kill. And he sees his mission in her. He sees his vision in her. And he says, woman, where are your accusers? Where are your accusers? And she says, they're gone. And he says, neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. He saw his mission and his vision in that woman. There's a small man climb up a tree. His name is Zacchaeus. And nobody even knows Zacchaeus is there. If they knew Zacchaeus was there, they would curse him out because he was not liked. He was a little dishonest. Was he a tax collector? I yeah. believe he was a tax collector. But Jesus, he's the reason everyone's gathered there. <laughs> he's the reason the crowd's there. And Jesus walks up to the tree, he looks up at the man that nobody notices, and he calls him by name. Zacchaeus, come down from that tree, because today we're going to sup together, we're going to have lunch together, we're going to eat together, hang out together in your home. That's our Jesus. He, he sees his mission and his vision in everyone. He sees it in you. Nobody else might see it. But he sees it in you. You might not see it in yourself. But he sees it in you. And he calls you by name. He sees it in every situation. And there's various situations, right? There's a wedding party. There's nothing spiritual going on. But Jesus does this miracle right there. There's a hungry multitude. He's trying to preach. They're hungry. He feeds 5,000. And he feeds 4,000 two separate occasions. There's random needs where people would just run up to him and ask him, come quick. And sometimes he would run with them and go heal the person. Sometimes he just said, they're healed right now. But he always saw an opportunity 
in the need. In fact, there's some places in the Bible where the disciples actually tried to get rid of people. It's like, Jesus, let's send this troublesome woman away. She keeps asking for you to heal her daughter. Get her out of here, right? No, Jesus sees a mission right there and a vision. There's another place where these little children are sitting on Jesus' lap. And the disciples are like, oh, these kids, they're wasting everybody's time. He ought to be preaching, and we should be taking up an offering. I don't know. They didn't say that. I'm adding that. And what does Jesus say? He says, suffer the little children to come unto me. Don't you dare chase one of these children off. In fact, let me tell you, anybody that hurts one of these little ones, it would be better for them to tie a giant stone, a millstone, around their neck and throw that millstone into the ocean. Can I tell you, Jesus still feels that way? You listen to me. Jesus still feels that way. Jesus' heart is deeply moved by child abuse. He is deeply moved by the sex trafficking. He's deeply moved about that church. Are we deeply moved about that? Are we praying about that? Do we want to change those things? My God, my God. He sees his mission and vision in every situation and in every person. And he sees it in every day. Here's one place. He, he even made some people mad when he healed people on the Sabbath. They didn't want him to do it on that day. Right? But sorry, his mission and vision never end. He's not going to take a day off for his mission and vision ever. He sees it every day in every situation, and in every person. So do you see your mission and vision everywhere? Do you see it everywhere? That's what you've got to see in every person. I, and I, we could take this to spiritual places. We could take this to your business. We could take this to your family. Newsflash, really everything is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. So you're trying to start a business. You're trying to start a business. Every person you meet is important to start this vision, to start this. This could be the very, what is this person? You could network this with this person. This person might be the exact person you're looking for, and you might be the exact person they are looking for. And this could be your business partner. But you would never know it if you don't see mission and vision in every person. Go ahead and see it in every person. See it in every situation, even the terrible situations, even the sad situations. Can I tell you, there's some situations I am so sad that I'm there in that moment, but then God speaks to me and I realize I'm supposed to be there in that moment. I'm actually called to the scene of this accident to get out and render aid. I'm actually at this place while they're fighting over in this room over here. I mean, I'm, I'm here to pray peace on them. Uh, there's a person that's asking for money and sometimes that's, whoa, that's like, oh man, I'm busy. You know, I just, you know, I would like to spend my own money rather than give it away today. You know, maybe, maybe this is your mission and your vision. Can you see your mission and vision everywhere like Jesus did? Because that's what he did. And can you see it every day, even the worst day? Even the day where you're having trouble getting out of bed. Even that day where somebody has ticked you off royally. Even that day, can you see your mission and vision? Because your mission and vision are more important than little setbacks and frustrations. See your mission and your vision everywhere. That's why like, you should write your mission and vision down and actually literally put it where you will see it all the time. you got to remind yourself. Remind yourself and see it every day. I'm telling you, as a Christian, we ought to be walking up to people and seeing what God wants us to do for them. And seeing that that's a person that needs Jesus. That's our mission and vision. Jesus succeeded and Jesus wants you to succeed. Do you believe that? Yes. I hope you believe that. Jesus wants you to succeed. You don't have to beg or bargain with Jesus. Ever pray that way? I used to pray that way a lot. It's wrong. You don't have to beg and bargain with Jesus. Oh, Jesus, please love me. Please. He's like, dude, I went to the cross for you. Do you not get this? Here in his love that Christ died for you while you were yesterday. Jesus, please. 
Let me feel your pr- be in this place today. He's like, I want to be in this place with you. Yeah. You're, you're begging me to be here? Please speak to us today. You don't have to beg him. He wants to. Nor do you have to bargain with him. Oh, Jesus, if you just do this, I promise, I promise, promise. I'll read all of the book of Job. Deal, right? Get real specific with it. I want to tell you the Bible says it very clearly. He is for you and not against you. You don't have to talk him into this. He loves you and he is for you. Jesus wants to help you. He wants to empower you. Where the rest of the world wants to actually steal power from you or take away power from you, Jesus wants to give you that power. He wants to see you succeed, and he will even fight on your behalf. Will you let Jesus help you succeed? Will you let him? I don't know what you think your mission is, be a lot of things family financial career health college it could be a lot of things doesn't matter what it is jesus wants you to succeed he does he does jesus is a man of mission and vision who succeeded in every way as people of jesus he desires that we be people of mission and vision and walk into continued success but i, I want to tell you something you've got your mission and vision working up in here in your brain i want to tell you that jesus christ has given you a mission do you understand what i'm saying jesus christ has given you a mission do you care about the mission jesus has given you yes. do you care about that do you know do you know jesus's mission for you if you say you care about it but you don't know jesus's mission for you then rethink that John chapter 13, verse 34 through 35. Jesus says, a new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know you are my disciples. If you love one another. Does that sound like a mission? It's your mission to love every one. Anybody fulfill that mission yet? Me neither i'm working on that but there are people your enemies jesus says to love them to pray for them what that's what he says that's his mission can you make it your mission to love everyone that's a big mission that's his mission for you it's his mission for this church it's his mission for your family that love would flow out of you what love The very love that God gave you. The very love that Jesus gave you. As I have loved you. So you must love one another. And this reveals to everyone that you're his disciple. Your mission. Love others with the love of Jesus. Look at this. Matthew 28, 19. What what is this called? This is called the great commission. Right? Therefore go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is your mission. He has given us all a mission to make disciples. You listen to me. He didn't just give your pastor this mission. This mission is to every disciple. Are you a disciple? Are you a follower of Jesus Christ? Then it is your mission to go and make other disciples. It's your mission to baptize. It's your mission to teach them and to know that he's with you always in it. That's your mission. Make disciples. This is Jesus' mission for you. Do you care about it? Are you waiting me to finish? You care about this mission? Then go make disciples this year. Find a way to make it happen. Are you too busy with your own personal mission? To care about God's mission for you? Is maybe you've got your own personal mission up here. The house, the money, the car, the college. And then you've got his mission. It's, it's down here. It's up here on Sundays. But it goes down here. If the Cowboys are playing on Sunday, it's, it's further down. Which is punishment. You're watching the Cowboys these days. Those Cowboys. 
Where, where is his mission and your mission, your personal mission? Where are those things? Where do they, which one's on top? Which one's the priority? Matthew 6, 31, verse 32 says this. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. I want to tell you that a lot of our mission stuff is like the pagans running around. It's the words of Jesus. What are we going to do? What am I going to wear? You say, what? What is what? The mission is what, right? Mission is the what? What are we going to eat? What are we going to wear? What are we going to do? Those people said that. What will we say in return? What, what, what? All these what's. The world is just full of what's everywhere. In fact, that's why there's 20 news networks and none of them agree what is going on. They're just all over the place. Gives me a complex, really big, all these news networks. Everybody is just running around like the pagans, Jesus said. This is the word of God. When you make his mission a priority, you aren't running after every single what out there. And it's a new what every day because the what of yes, you talk about insanity. There are people that are living every day with a brand new what. And they're going crazy. That is depressing. Jesus Christ has a what for you that will last from here to the end of time. When you make his mission a priority, great things happen. Here's the very next verse, verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as do you see this beautiful picture? Do you see this? That Jesus doesn't want those things, all the what's in the world, to be your priority, but the kingdom of God to be the first priority in your life. And when the kingdom of God is the first priority in your life, He says that He will give you all the other things, all the other what's out there. He will give them to you. Is that what it says? Do you believe that? I believe it. When you seek first God's mission, not only will you accomplish this spiritual mission, but all your personal missions will also be added to you as well. And God's mission, is God's mission first place in your life? Or is it down on your list of priorities? Now he requested, he said to make it first. Can you make his kingdom First today. Not just today, but tomorrow. And going onward, can you make his vision for you, his mission for you, his kingdom for you first? Scripture declares many times that it will be added to you. Matthew 6, 33. It declares that he will give you power by the Spirit. Acts chapter 1, 8. And that he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 37, and four, but only if you put his kingdom first. He's given you this mission. Will you put it first today? We're about to come to this altar. Will you put this first today? Maybe you came to church saying, I'm going to pray about all these things. Can you lower those a little bit on your level of what you're going to pray about today? Maybe you pray first, God, what is your will for me? What is your mission for me? How do you want me to accomplish what you're calling me to do? If you really care about your personal mission, then you ought to make God's mission first place in your life because he will fulfill all your personal missions when you put him first. Can you make God's mission your first priority today? Right before we come, I want to tell you a very just simple story from my life. I was a junior in high school, and I had a goal. I just had a personal goal. I was going to be, I was going to rank in state in something. I just, that was my only goal just for anything. I want to go and be successful in something competition-wise at the state level. And I worked really hard uh, my sophomore year. I worked really hard my junior year. I gave it my best junior year. I got nowhere. I got nowhere. I got just totally shut down on it. And I... Man, I thought my good was good. It just wasn't good enough. And I just was like, what's all this about? And during that summer, I went to just a, a youth camp. Anybody ever go to a youth camp? Anybody, a little youth uh, 
conference and I, somebody got up and they told this story. I'm going to tell you this story real quick. They had a dream. They were a varsity basketball player who had won many championships for their state championships for their team. And they had a dream where they walked into a basketball uh, room, the, 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 the gym where they played all their games. And there was a big scoreboard. And on one side of the scoreboard, there was a number that kept going up. And it was the number of awards. It was the number of varsity letters. It was the number of, of trophies. It was the number of scholarship offers. It was all these numbers just kept going up and up. And they felt so good. They felt so accomplished. And then they looked to the other side of the scoreboard. And that number was a zero. And they asked, God, what is the zero? And that zero was, that's the number of souls you saved when you were in high school. That was the number of people you shared your faith with while you were in high school. That's the number of times you tried to do my will in high school. I would have given you everything else also, but I wanted you to do my will. And I remember I was about 18, I was about uh, 16 years old. I just was bawling in that stadium, listening to that. And I decided to the Lord that night, I said, God, I want to make state so bad, but that's going to move down the priority list. I'm, st I d I'm not going to quit. I'm going to work on it. But, you know, more than anything, I'm going to share my faith. And I'm going to see other people come to know you. And I'm going to start a Bible study in my school. I'm going to start a prayer time in my school. I'm going to be just radical. I'm going to just go and do that. And that year, my goodness, friend after friend after friend came to know Jesus Christ. And we had Bible studies in classrooms and they just were filling up with people and we were just talking to people and everywhere I went God was just moving and ministering I went from like a youth group of like three people to a youth group of 20 people and they were my classmates they were my friends that God have saved I saw it first the kingdom of God and you know what also was added to me I went to state I went to state in like three different things. I was successful in all that. I actually gave it less time. I actually gave it less effort. But God, he brought it all to pass. I want to tell you, if you will seek first the kingdom of God, not only will he help you do these spiritual things, he will help you to do the physical things, and he will bring victory into your life. I'm telling you that promotion is yours when you seek first the kingdom of God. I'm telling you a happy home is yours when you seek first the kingdom of God. When you seek first the kingdom of God, he will add all these things to you. But his, his mission has to be first. Why don't you come right now and make his vision first. If you're in need of special prayer in this place, I want you to come into the first two feet. We're going to pray for you. We want God to move in your life. If you don't want to come into the first two feet, that's no big deal. I want you to reach out to the Lord. I want you to talk to God in this place. I want you to ask Him, God, what is your will? Your will be done, not mine. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you for everyone watching, listening online, everyone in the room, God. Lord, I pray, Lord, that every one of us, Lord, would reach out to you, God, that we would seek for your kingdom, your righteousness, God, and that we would see you add all those other things to us. Father, Lord, I want you to speak to us. Lord, I want you to help us see the opportunities in front of us. Help us to see the mission in front of us, the everyday mission, the every person mission, the every situation mission. Help us to see it. Help us to walk in it, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's talk to God in this house. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank For more Lord. information about redemption, look us up online at redemption-church.com. We want to hear from you, so be sure to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, or even our anonymous question text line at 214-856-0550. Thank you for joining us and have a blessed day.